All right, hello everybody. Um, just a few things to go over before we get started. Uh, this is uh, our virtual uh, college exploration with um, Ball State University. Uh, how do you ask questions? You type it into the Q&A button. Your camera and your microphone will be turned off. Um, and if you wanna sign up for more sessions, you can go on the MOACAC website and sign up for more presentations after tonight. And also this one will be recorded. So if there's anything you forget to write down, you can always go back and watch the recording. So with that, we'll get started. All right, hello everybody. My name is Alicia and I am an assistant director in the Office of Admissions at Ball State University. Um, I am actually a two-time graduate of Ball State University myself. So I graduated in 2016 with my Bachelor of Arts in Telecommunications. Um, and then I just recently graduated um, in December 2019 with my Master of Arts in um, Adult and Community Education. Um, in addition to that, I grew up in the Muncie area where Ball State is located. Um, my grandfather taught uh, cellular biology, anatomy, and physiology. So I grew up on campus. I grew up um, around Muncie. So if you have any questions related to um, Ball State, Muncie, the surrounding area, anything like that, feel free um, to ask me because I have been around here for a while. Um, and I'm going to share my screen now so you guys can see my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so again, my name is Alicia, um, and this is Ball State University. So just a little bit about us. We are located um, in Muncie, Indiana. It's about four and a half hours from St. Louis um, and about eight hours from Kansas City. We uh, have approximately 22,000 students, 17,000 of those being undergraduate students. Um, and our main campus is situated on about 790 acres of land. Um, and a lot of it, as you'll see uh, in the pictures as I scroll through, um, are green spaces. So Ball State really did with their architecture, try to put as much green spaces on our campus as possible. Um, in addition to that, just in uh, lo location um, as compared to our biggest city, Indianapolis, we are about an hour north of them. So if you're looking for big shopping malls um, and an abundance of things to do from a big city, um, we're only about an hour away from Indianapolis and then only about three and a half hours away from Chicago. So moving on to our academics, possibly. Um, we have about 120 different academic um, majors that spread across seven different academic colleges. So we are most known for our education, um, architecture, our College of Fine Arts. So if you're looking um, into theater and dance, music or art. Um, in addition to that, um, we're also known for our business. So if you're looking to go completely online, I know especially now due to COVID, online programming um, is skyrocketing. Uh, so our business program at the undergraduate level is completely online. So if that's something you're interested in, I highly recommend taking a look at that. Um, many of our programs are also degree in three. This means that you can actually graduate with your undergraduate degree in three years as opposed to four. And the way that students do this is by taking a few classes in the summer, um, and that'll actually allow you to graduate um, in three years. Many of our pre-professional programs are this way. So if you're looking at pre-engineering, pre-dental, pre-optometry, pre-law, something like that, our political science, a lot of our business major majors are gonna be degree in three, just because many times, oftentimes students are gonna want to go to graduate school, they're, wanting, they're gonna wanna get their master's or PhD, PhD or you know, go on to some sort of specialty school like med school, law school, something like that. Um, and this degree in three program will kind of jumpstart that process for you and allow you to get started um, more quickly. Um, in addition to that, our career placement rate is at about 94%. What this means is that students who graduate within six months of graduating, they are either in um, a career that is related to their major. So, you know, it's not like, you know, you have a business degree and you're working retail. No, this uh, career placement rate means you are working in your academic area of interest or you have gone on to um, grad school or another sort of specialty school like med school, law school. Um, if you have uh, no idea what you want to do when you come to college, um, you're not alone. It's completely normal for, you know, 18 year olds, 17 year olds um, who are going to college to be unsure of what they want to do. And this is completely understandable. Um, we have a program that's actually called 
um, exploratory studies. This is just a fancy term for undecided. So you'll have special access to academic advisors who are specially trained um, to deal with undecided majors. You'll have um, special services at the Career Center um, and just a bunch of different uh, opportunities that will become available to you to test out and see um, where you'll fit best, what will, we you know, what career you want, um, and how that will correspond to a major. Um, so there are options if um, you are undecided. Again, that's our exploratory studies major. Um, if you want more, uh, if you want more specific information about your major or minor, um, there are links here on the PowerPoint, um, bsu.edu backslash majors. Um, what's great is you'll actually get to see, when you click on a major, you'll get to see every class that you'll need to take in order to graduate with that major. So say you, maybe you want to be a computer science major, um, but you look and see, wow, you have to take calculus too, and you don't really like math. Um, so you can kind of feel out whether or not that major um, is going to be right for you before you get into it and realize, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I had to take, you know, this many years of, you know, advanced level math. Um, so that is definitely helpful um, to take a look at the classes um, that you'll be taking. So immersive learning. Immersive learning is something that's completely unique to Ball State. This is something that Ball State created because we realized that when students graduate, what employers are looking for is what's on your resume. They're not going to see, oh, you took Math 125, oh, you took Econ you know, 201. They're not going to be looking at the specific classes you took. They're going to see, yes, what degree did you earn, but also, do you know how to apply what you've been learning, or have you just been reading and taking tests? So immersive learning actually allows you to apply what you've been learning. It allows you to have something tangible to put on your resume that shows, yes, I do know what I'm doing. I do know more than just the theory behind, you know, what we're reading in a textbook. So again, it's going to help you build those relevant skills um, and gain practical experience. And again, we've done this because we realized that when students graduate, this is what employers are looking for. Um, and the example that I provided on the slide is our PRISM project. So the PRISM project is a nationally recognized performing arts program um, for children with special needs. So typically this immersive learning project is something um, that our special education students, our psychology students, um, and our clinical profession students um, take part in. They go and they, you know, help students with special needs, um, do different drama programs. Um, some of them even do visual arts and things like that. Um, and again, this is something that you can put on your resume that's going to help you stand out from, you know, peers at other institutions who, have, who are graduating with the exact same degree. Um, and this is just one example. There are thousands of different immersive learning opportunities that will be available to you across every single major that we have. So um, don't hesitate to go again to that bsu.edu backslash majors. They'll list out different immersive learning opportunities and you're also able to create your own. So if that's something you're interested in, if you're interested in maybe a different uh, or a certain passion project, um, definitely making connections with faculty. Um, many students do get those passion projects um, realized so that way they can use that experience to go on and actually make a career out of that. Okay, up next is our dedicated faculty and the personal support we provide students um, while they're attending and after they attend Ball State University. So just a few quick facts um, to give here. So 92% of our classes are taught by faculty. Um, the remaining 8% are taught by graduate students, but they are always overseen by a full-time you know, faculty member. Um, so there are no concerns there. Um, and just like our immersive learning opportunities for our, um, for our undergraduate students, our graduate students are also you know, given the same um, benefits of having these immersive learning opportunities, especially if they want to be um, faculty members themselves, if they want to be professors. Um, these are typically the students who are teaching our classes. Um, so they can also get that experience and be able to get jobs when they graduate. Um, we currently have a 14 to 1 student faculty ratio and our average class size is about 21 students. Um, that's not to say that you won't have a 60 person lecture hall. Um, there are a few of those, of course, with COVID going on right now, um, there aren't, but typically um, I would say students only take about two to three classes that have 50 or more students. 
Um, you'll find that as you get more um, into your major, so as you're a junior and a senior, um, those classes actually shrink. So when I was a senior at Ball State um, in my TCOM degree, there was 12 to 15 students in all of my classes, um, and I knew them all because we were all in the same cohort. So that was really nice to not only get to know my faculty members, but get to know um, all of my classmates. So some of the additional support services that we offer, um, first up, academic advising. So every student is going to have an academic advisor. Um, they're going to be able to help you from day one. They're going to map out all of your classes so you're not confused, you're not going to get behind. Um, if you need help with anything, it doesn't just have to be academic, um, anything at all. They're going to have resources that they can provide um, to you. Um, that way you can get the help you be successful here at Boston. Um, next is career planning. So our career center is um, a nationally recognized career center. Um, they do an amazing job helping our students um, get jobs after they graduate. Um, they do a lot of resume building. They do a lot of um, mock interviews. Um, they do mock like dinners um, and things like that. So it's an amazing resource um, and I highly recommend all students take advantage of it. Um, and what's great is that our career center is a lifelong service. So even after you graduate Ball State, you can always come back and get their services. So maybe you wanna to apply to a new job, you maybe you wanna do a career change, something like that. Um, our career center is always gonna be um, a resource that's available to you, no matter if you graduated 50 years ago. Um, next is clubs and causes. I've got another page. I'll hit a little bit more on that later. So healthcare and recreational services. So we do have a health center on campus that's included in your um, in your like tuition and fees. So that is all um, included. We have women's services there. Um, anything that you could possibly need, you can go to our um, med center and get services there. Um, finally, our learning resources and accessibility. So we do have a tutoring center and a writing center. So just as it sounds, um, our tutoring center um, tutors in just about every course that we offer at Ball State. So say you're not good at biology um, and you just need a little bit of extra help, you can actually go um, every single week, meet with the same tutor um, and get tutored for Bio 101. Um, same goes with the writing center. So you know, maybe you're not the strongest writer. Maybe you know, you're not familiar with APA formatting or you know, citing your sources or whatever it may be. Maybe you just need help brainstorming an idea for a research paper. Um, our, write, our writing center um, is available um, to all of our students. Um, and both of those services are um, at no cost. So you can get all those services for free. Um, also, we do have a disability services office. Um, I do want to mention if you do have an IEP or in special education, anything like that, um, there is a little bit of a shift when you come to higher education, um, and this is going to be at institutions all around, um, is that you are going to be in charge of your own uh, in, in charge of your own resources. So you will have to be the one um, that goes to them and requests those services. Um, and you're gonna have to let them know what you need in order to be successful. Um, and so it is important to be on top of that because um, if you procrastinate um, and wait until the last minute, you're, um, you may not have those resources available. They may already be checked out um, or something like that. So I just highly recommend going um, and getting those services right away. Okay, next up is our residence halls and university dining. So being that um, you are Missouri students and that you know some of you could be potentially as far as eight, nine hours away, um, you do have to live in our residence halls for the first year. Um, but what's nice is that you can bring your car to campus um, and there is always gonna be a place for you to park. So don't worry that you know, you're not gonna have a place or anything like that. Um, most of our dining, or excuse me, most of our residence halls are all um, renovated or brand new. Our oldest um, residence hall actually just got taken down and we are building a new one to replace it. Um, many of them are suite style, which means you're going to be sharing um, a bathroom with only six to eight people as opposed to whole floors. Um, we do have that in one of our residence halls, but most of them are suite style, um, especially if you're um, interested in our honors college. Um, they've got one of the nicest residence halls on campus. So um, if you're interested in living in one of the best dorms on campus, definitely looking into the honors college um, would help you with that. Um, we do separate, kind of going off that, we do separate um, our students into living learning communities, which means you're going to be living with or around people with your same academic area of interest. 
interest. So you may not be with the same um, major. So for example, say you're interested in elementary education, um, you could be, you know, rooming with a special education student, or, you know, you could be room rooming with, you know, a language learning education student. So um, we do that for a number of different reasons, but one of the biggest ones is that it's just a lot easier to make friends um, when you're around people who are interested and passionate, passionate about the same things that you are. Um, next is university dining. So your meal swipes um, is actually going to be included with your residence hall fees. So they all kind of combine into one. Um, and your meal swipes can be used at any dining location on campus, even our fast food chains. So on campus, like we have two Starbucks on campus now. Um, we have Jamba Juice, Chick-fil-A, Papa John's. Uh, Quiznos, Taco Bell. Um, we just have a number of different um, chain restaurants if that's what you're interested in. Um, we also have more of your traditional um, dining facilities. So we've got like make your own pizza bar, salad bars. We've got like um, allergy free zone. So if you, you know, have a severe allergy or maybe you're just gluten free, vegetarian, vegan, um, there are specific areas that are completely like allergy um, free and you can go there um, and eat worry free. Um, all of our food is marked. So if you are, you know, have some sort of restriction, you have to be dairy free, you have to be, you know, whatever it may be. Um, everything is marked. So it's very easy for students um, to get what they need on campus. Also, um, we do have registered dietitians um, that you can actually go to and they'll make meal plans for you. And that is also at no cost. So if that's something you're interested in, if you're really into health fitness, um, that is a service that is free to our students. So next, campus life. So realistically, yes, you know, we're here for, you know, an education, um, but that's really only going to take up about 50% of our time. 50%, you know, we're going to be out in the state community, out in the Muncie community. We're going to be making friends uh, and things like that. So we do have over 400 plus student organizations. Um, odds are you're going to find one of those um, where you're going to fit in. Um, if not, that's okay. It's easy to actually create your own organization as well. Um, and you can do that by talking to our student life organization. Um, and you can actually create your own. Um, we have 30 different sororities and fraternities, uh, 19 NCAA Division I sports. We have about 50 intramural um, like sports and clubs. Um, and then on top of that, um, something, again, that kind of sets Ball State apart from a lot of other institutions um, is that we put a heavy emphasis on volunteer work. You're going to be hard pressed to find an organization that does not have some sort of volunteering component. Um, even in our majors and our immersive learning projects, many of them are based on volunteering. Um, and it's something that kind of goes back to our founding, that idea of beneficence, of doing things um, in a way that helps others. Um, and so most, if you're interested in volunteer work or activism or something like that, uh, that is really huge on our campus. Okay, up next, the not so fun stuff. So costs and financial aid. So what's nice is that four out of every five um, students qualify for some sort of like need based aid um, or merit based aid. Um, this could be whether your grades, your test scores um, constitute some sort of merit based aid um, or whether your FAFSA um, warrants you some sort of grant uh, or something like that. So the average or about the the cost of um, for one year for an out of state student is about thirty seven thousand about thirty eight thousand um, dollars a year. Now that does include um, all of your academics as well as your food in your residence halls. Um, I don't really want that number to scare you though because we offer a lot of merit based aid for out of state students. Um, if you're an out of state student more than likely you are going to be given some sort of merit-based aid, um, even if you choose not to submit your test scores. So I wouldn't let that number scare you. Um, also, I do wanna mention that the cost of living in the dorms um, and the cost of food costs about 10 to $11,000 a year. So after that first year on campus, you can move to you know, a university apartment or you can you know, live in one of the Muncie rentals around campus. There are a lot because we are a college town. Um, so that right there is going to save you $10,000 a year. Um, so I highly recommend um, if you're interested in looking at the scholarships um, that you could be eligible for, um, if you go to bsu.edu backslash scholarships, we're going to have a scholarship calculator. 
um, you can put in your test scores, you can put in your GPA, um, and make sure you put in that you're an out-of-state student, and you can see before you even apply um, how much you're eligible for in uh, merit-based aid. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that everyone looks at that, because that can also um, help when determining whether or not want to submit your test scores or not. And I'll talk a little bit more about our um, test optional policy, which means you don't have to submit those scores if you don't um, feel they represent you well as a student. Um, so something I want to point out is that the FAFSA does um, open up on October 1 um, and closes April 15th. Um, so the FAFSA is quite an involved process. You're going to need a lot of financial information. Um, it can be a bit cumbersome, so I highly recommend filling out that FAFSA as soon as you can because it will take more time than you expect just because you will need all of your parents' financial information or your um, legal guardian's financial information, uh, and that can be uh, quite a laborious task to fill out. Okay, next. So our test optional policy. So we don't require um, your SAT or ACT score, um, and we've been test optional since 2018. So maybe, you know, you're not a good test taker. Um, maybe you don't have, you know, the money to go take the SAT three, four times. Um, right now, it's nice because COVID, maybe you just can't get a test um, in. Um, you don't have to. If you feel that your GPA is strong enough, uh, if you feel you've worked really hard for the last four years, um, then go right ahead um, and submit test optional. Um, again, that uh, that scholarship calculator can help you. So maybe maybe you don't think your SAT or ACT score is any good. I still recommend putting it in the calculator just to see um, because you don't know. Like you know what's good at one institution, you know may not at another, or you know what's not good at one institution may be good at another. So I highly recommend. Even if you feel like your test scores aren't strong, going into the calculator and typing it in just to make sure um, you're getting the most merit dollars that you possibly can. Um, I do want to mention that if there are any homeschool students or if maybe your high school does not award letter grades, um, that you will still have to submit your standardized test scores. So, um, but any, if you, you know, attend a high school, public, private high school that, um, you know, grants you letter grades, you are good to not submit your scores if you don't feel like they are an accurate repre representation of you as a student. And feel free to put any questions um, in, in the Q&A that you may have about that, because I know um, this is kind of something that's new and upcoming that not a lot of schools are currently test optional. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the chat. Okay, so this is how to apply to Ball State University. So first things first, um, we are not part of the Common App. So that means you have to go directly to our website to apply. Um, I don't know how many of you have filled out the, the Common App, but it's a very long process. Um, our application is not that way. Our application takes students maybe 15 minutes to fill out. Um, it's really not um, difficult at all. Um, so when you're going to apply to Ball State, the first thing that I would recommend doing is going to review our admission criteria. Um, we pretty much just look that you are graduating with a high school diploma. Um, so, you know, we're looking for uh, four years of English, three years of a science, three years of math. Um, if you're interested in our honors college, um, taking three years of a foreign language. Um, but again, all that criteria is listed on our website. So I highly recommend going to take a look at that. Um, next step would be make, once you've um, ensured that you've met all that criteria, going in and applying. Um, and then once you apply, contact your high school counselor um, to send in your uh, transcript. Also, if you are choosing to submit your scores, um, make sure you've contacted College Board or the ACT to have your scores sent to us. Um, if you feel like you want to submit a resume or um, a personal essay about yourself, if you feel like that'll bolster your application, um, you can uh, upload that to your application after it's been submitted. Um, again, make sure you fill out that FAFSA and apply for financial aid as soon as possible. That's very important to make sure you get all the money um, that you're eligible for. Um, and then from there, it usually takes us about four to six weeks to get decisions back to students, um, and we will send it to you via um, email and um, snail mail. Um, and two deadlines that I want to point out to you guys. 
So first is the priority scholarship deadline. If you are highly interested in scholarships, apply by December 1st. Um, this just ensures that you can put in your scholarship applications and um, be evaluated for those. Um, if you are not looking to apply for separate scholarships, just applying by March 1st would be sufficient. Um, and finally, um, if you want to learn more about us, we are doing more virtual visits. So there's a virtual campus visit, which is kind of like what I'm doing here. Um, there's chat with the Cardinal, which is a one hour Q&A with a current Ball State student. Um, there's one on one appointments with financial aid or with admissions, which is me. Um, and then there's also academic sessions. So this means um, that you can go and actually talk to faculty members in the department that you're interested um, in being a part of. Um, and you can do all that by going to bsu.edu backslash visit. Okay, and here's my contact information. So feel free to email me um, directly if you have any questions. Um, I generally get back to emails within 24 hours, um, unless I'm insanely busy, but typically always within 24 hours. Um, you can call me directly. Typically, I am busy doing virtual visits um, or I'm away from my um, desk, so I'm not usually um, available to answer direct calls right away, but if you leave a message, I can absolutely call you back. Um, if you want to talk to someone um, on the phone, I recommend calling our general line, which is also listed on this page, um, and there is always going to be someone there to answer your question uh, Monday through Friday, um, 8 to 5 Eastern time. So we are um, in the Eastern time zone. So we are an hour forward from you guys. Um, but yeah, so if you have any like immediate pressing questions, definitely you can call the general line. You can also email the general email. Um, someone at my level or one of, the, um, one of our student workers will get back to you. So, okay, that, I'm gonna leave this screen up just in case anyone wants to write down. Um, the information, I'll wait for about 15 seconds. Um, and then this is gonna conclude the presentation um, and I can take a look at the Q&A to see if anyone's asked any questions. Uh, now would be the time to type them if you have any. Okay, also, um, if you need me to, um, let's see, I can provide my contact information again if it's if I haven't left it up long enough. Just ask it in the chat and I can put it in there. Okay, so we do have a question here. Are there in-person visits available? Yes, we do um, currently have in-person visits. Um, and we, so our campus visits are all filled up right now. We are work. We've just hired 15 new tour guides because, um, obviously, with COVID going on, we're being very careful um, with how we're being very careful with how um, many people we're putting with a tour guide. Um, and so we're generally just having one family per tour guide, which has kind of limited us in how many campus tours we can give. Um, but we did just hire 15 new tour guides. Um, so I would definitely keep a look at like bsu.edu backslash visit um, to see when more spots will open up because they will open up. Um, but you're welcome on campus anytime. We do have self-guided tours um, and things like that where we can give you materials and things like that um, if you're interested. Um, another question, when will registration for the October visit day open? Um, I don't have a specific date on that yet. Um, I know that they're still working out logistics and so they're trying to get a date set and all of that, but there is not um, a confirmed date for when registration will open. Um, but as soon as registration does open, you will be, as long as um, you have filled out like an interest card or something like that with us. If you're receiving Ball State emails, um, you will get a, you will be sent an email uh, letting you know when that um, visit day has been opened. Um, another question here. So do you have a pre-professional uh, program in pharmacy? Yes, we do have a pre-professional program in pharmacy, but we do not have a pharmacy um, program like on our campus. So like to actually become, you know, get your PharmD, I believe it's called. Um, we don't have that on our campus, but we do have the pre-professional pre program. Um, is there an abroad program? Yes, we do have study abroad. Um, I didn't mention it in the presentation right away just because right now there is no travel. Um, but under normal circumstances, yes, we do have study abroad um, programs. We, 
And what's great is that you can do them for like semesters at a time, for a year at a time, um, even during like spring break, fall break, winter break. So depending on what fits into your schedule, um, I just recommend talking to your academic advisor right away just so they can schedule that um, and make sure you can actually take classes that go towards your um, degree while you're studying abroad. So I just make sure you let your um, academic advisor know and they can help you with that and make sure it's put in your schedule. So I've been accepted into the Honors College. Can you share more with me about that? Absolutely. So our Honors College, the way I like to describe it is that it's not necessarily for the smartest person in the room, but it's for someone who likes to learn how to think outside of the box. So there are certain GPA requirements and things like that, that yes, um, you know, you do need to have a certain academic um, rigor to your transcript and, you know, you have to do well. Um, but it really is about going against what we have thought of as concrete. So for example, you know, being in K through 12, you know, we learn from a textbook and we learn that the textbook is what it is. The textbook is fact and that's just X, Y, Z, you know, I mean, the textbook is almost like law, right? But in the honors college, you're going to learn to kind of question what we've always thought of as right um, and realize that all these things are flawed. We're all human. You know, we all make mistakes. There are flaws there, are, you know, all these different things. So it kind of teaches you to um, academically um, like research um, and how to find credible sources and things like that. So it really is more uh, conversation based um, and research based. So you'll be doing a lot of papers, you'll be doing a lot of research. Um, and maybe one thing that students find difficult um, is that you're always going to be expected to be prepared because it is discussion based. So making sure that you've done the reading, making sure that you're prepared because your grade is gonna be a big portion of what you can contribute to the conversation um, because everyone has a different voice and you know we all uh, we all become better people with diversity so just making sure that you know you're prepared um, you've done your reading and that you contribute to the conversation because your voice is really important okay let's see can you have prescriptions refilled on campus yes you can um, we do have a pharmacy um, on our, our in our uh, med center they're right now i think they're closed two days of the week i don't know what they are off the top of my head they're all listed on the website we do definitely have a um, pharmacy on our campus if for some reason that uh, prescription can't be filled there um, we have a lot of different options that are super close to campus i mean there's a cvs and walgreens within walking distance of many of the residence halls um, if you bring your car obviously definitely within driving um, distance Something else that I didn't mention but um, is really helpful to students is that um, our uh, Ball State students can ride the MITS public transportation system for free. It's a busing system. Um, and as long as you have your student ID with you, um, you can ride that for free and it'll take you to most places you need to go around Muncie. So if you need to get dropped off by, you know, Walgreens or CVS or you need to go to Walmart or Target or the mall or anything like that, um, the the MITS um, bus system will take you there for free. All right, does anyone else have any questions? We still have about, uh, about let's see, 15 minutes left in the session. I can stick around. Um, like I said, if you guys have um, any questions later, you can um, email me at agannion, A-G-A-N-I-O-N, um, at bsu.edu. Um, you can call us at any time. You can call me. Like I said, I generally um, do have to call back because I'm not usually by my phone um, or I'm giving virtual presentations. Um, but you can also call me anytime as well. Okay, I will stick around for a few minutes longer. Um, you guys feel free to head out um, if you don't have any more questions. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about Ball State. Um, and again, I'll stick around for a few more minutes if anyone else has any questions.
Great. I'm just going to give a couple things at the end. Um, Lisa, you don't have to go anywhere. We can still wait a few more minutes, but I just figured I would go through my ending screen. Um, for all of our participants, there is going to be a very quick four question survey that's gonna appear when you log off. Um, please fill that out for us. Uh, again, there will be more um, sessions at moacac.org. Uh, so please look at those. And then also if there's anything that you don't remember or you wanna go back and check, this recording will be available starting tomorrow. So we can just wait a few more minutes, um, but it looks like you might have got another question. Um, so I will stop sharing. <laughs> Okay, so is there a pre-vet program? Yes, there is a pre-vet program. Um, and all of the, so what's unique actually about our pre-vet program is um, you actually take some courses through Purdue University at, or I'm sorry, Purdue University in Indiana, um, which actually has the veterinarian program in Indiana. So like, um, if you want to be a vet, um, most of us uh, in Indiana um, will do the, the vet program at Purdue. Um, so our pre-vet program will prepare you for that program at Purdue and you even actually take a Purdue class while you're at Ball State. So you will absolutely be prepared um, through our pre-vet program um, to go to veterinarian school. Of course, you could also go to a vet school in uh, Missouri as well. But that one does, our program definitely prepares you for the program at Purdue to be successful there. All right, I think we're good. I think everyone's gone. All right, well, thank you guys. Um, and the sense of recording, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night.